Hello everyone! Thank God for his preparation so that we can share God's words on this platform. Many brothers and sisters told me that there is a lot of pressure to survive in life. They are so busy with work and life that they are getting farther and farther from God. Even if they insist on praying, reading the Bible, and fellowshipping together, then they are all male fanatics and cannot maintain a normal relationship with God, get more guidance from the Holy Spirit. They cannot feel real comfort and stability in their heart, and don't have more new understanding of God. In short, their spiritual life cannot grow and their relationship with God is becoming more and more alienated. Today, we are going to share four ways of practice in response to this dilemma in the spiritual life of Christians. First, pray to God with an honest heart and be moved by the Holy Spirit. Prayer is a channel through which we communicate with God. Through prayer, our hearts are better able to become proud before God, to contemplate God's words, to seek God's will, and to establish a normal relationship with God. But in life, because we are busy with work or household chores, we can often just go through the motions in prayer, and we just treat God perfunctorily by saying a few absent-minded words. Sometimes we say some pleasant sounding words and some empty, boastful words to God in prayer. And we do not say to God what is in our hearts, or sometimes when we pray, we recite certain words by heart, and we say those same still old words every time. And this becomes totally a prayer of a religious ritual. God hates it when we say prayers without really meaning any of it. Because this kind of prayer pertains only to outward appearance and religious ritual, and there is no real interaction with God in our spirit. People who pray like this are treating God perfunctorily and are deceiving God. Therefore, prayers like this are not heard by God and it becomes very hard for people who pray this way to be moved by the Holy Spirit. When they pray like this, they are unable to feel God's presence, their spirits are dark and weak, and their relationship with God becomes more and more distant. The Lord Jesus said, God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. God is a creator. He's looking upon the entire earth and watching our every word and action, our every thoughts and idea. When we pray to God, we worship God, and we must come before God with an honest heart. Therefore, when we pray to God, we must have a God-feeling heart. Speak sincerely and truthfully to God. Bring our real states, our difficulties, and our hardships before God, and tell Him about them. And we must seek God's will and seek the path of practice. For only in this way will our prayers conform to God's will. When we draw close to God frequently in this way, whether it be at gathering or during spiritual devotion, or when we are walking down the street, or sitting on the bus, or at work. Our hearts will always be silently opening up to God in prayer. Without being aware of it, our hearts can then become quiet before God even more. We will understand more of God's will, and when we encounter issues, we will know how to practice the truth to satisfy God. In this way, our relationship with God will become much more normal. Second, when reading God's words, contemplate them with your heart, and you will understand their true meaning. We practice spiritual devotions and read God's words every day. But 
Is it that we can have a normal relationship with God as long as we read His words? Definitely not. How then can we read God's words in a way that both achieves good results and that can enable our relationship with God become closer? I read a passage in the spiritual book. People believe in God, love God, and satisfy God by touching the Spirit of God with their heart, thereby obtaining His satisfaction. When engaging with God's words with their heart, they are therefore moved by the Spirit of God. These words tell us that when we read His words, we must contemplate them and go seeking with our heart. We must obtain the enlightenment and the illumination of the Holy Spirit, and we must understand God's will and what He requires of us. Only by reading God's words in this way will our efforts bear fruit and we will draw closer to God. When we read God's words, if we just give them a passing glance without really pay attention, if we only focus on understanding some letters and doctrines, in order to show ourselves off and we pay no attention to understanding the true meaning of God's words, then no matter how much we read His words, we will not conform to His will, much less will we be capable of establishing a normal relationship with God. Third, seek the truth and practice God's words in all things. The most crucial thing for us to maintain a normal relationship with God is to seek the truth when we encounter issues and to practice in accordance with His Word. But in life, when we encounter issues, we often rely on our own experiences or we employ human means to handle them, or we deal with them according to our own preferences we very seldom pardon ourselves before God and seek the truth, or deal with the issue in accordance with God's will. And this causes us to lose many opportunities to practice the truth, and we grow further and further away from God. I read a passage in a spiritual book. No matter what you are doing, no matter how big the matter is, and regardless of whether you are fulfilling your duty in God's family, or whether it is your private matter, you must consider whether this matter confirms with God's will, and whether this matter is something a person with humanity should do. If you seek the truth in everything this way, then you are a person who truly believes in God. And the Bible says, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed? God's words show us a clear path. Whether we are doing work in the church or handling issues that we have encountered in our lives, we must always seek the truth and understand God's will, see how to handle the matter in a way that meets God's requirements. Use the truth to resolve all the problems we may encounter and maintain our normal relationship with God. No matter what issue we may encounter in our lives, only by seeking the truth, grasping God's will, and acting in accordance with God's will, can we live under God's care and protection. And only in that way can we maintain our normal relationship with God. Fourth. Come before God and reflect on yourself every day and maintain your normal relationship with God. Lord Jesus said, The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when your eye is single, your whole body also is full of light. But when your eye is evil, your body also is full of darkness. Take heed, therefore, that the light which is in you be not darkness. From God's words, we can see that reflecting on ourselves is so necessary for our life entry. Through reflection, we can see that we have so many shortcomings and that we fall way too short of God's required criteria. The motivation to pursue the truth 
therefore arise in us. We resolve to forsake our flesh, and we do our utmost to practice in accordance with God's words. In this way, we take heed to act in accordance with God's requirements in our practical experiences. We practice God's words, and our relationship with God becomes increasingly normal. It can therefore be seen that frequently engaging in self-reflection is very important, and that one's practice of the truth is built upon the foundation of knowing oneself. Only by having true knowledge of one's own corruptions and shortcoming can remorse then arise, and one will then become willing to pursue the truth and practice God's words. Self-reflection is so very beneficial to our life progression, and it is the indispensable key to us joining closer to God. There are many ways to reflect on ourselves. We can reflect on ourselves in the light of God's words. We can reflect on ourselves in the mistakes that we make in our daily lives. Others point out our shortcomings and corruptions. It's even more so an excellent opportunity to reflect on ourselves. Furthermore, when we see the mistake made by those around us, we can also reflect on ourselves. Take their mistakes as a warning. Learn the lessons and be benefited by them, and so on. Self-reflection is not limited to the daytime or the nighttime. At any time and in any place, we can pray to God in our hearts, reflect on and know our own corruptions, and we can seek God's will and requirements within His words, and repent in time. However, before we go to bed each night, we should reflect on and summarize all that we did that day, and we will then be able to have a clearer grasp of our states. And know what things we have not yet got right. Once we start doing this, our pursuit will be more directional and will be more beneficial to establishing a normal relationship with God. The four points above are the paths of practice for us to draw closer to God. As long as we put these points into practice, then our relationship with God will become closer. And we will have a path of practice with issues we encounter, and God will bestow on us peace and joy, and will enable us to live in His blessings. Well, there are many detailed truths about the practice of how to establish a normal relationship with God. Only in two time constraints, we only briefly show the four practical ways. If you want to learn more, you are welcome to join our online fellowship. There will be more preachers to show more truths, and I believe that you will gain more knowledge of God. Our fellowship will be held at 8 p.m. British Standard Time, from Sunday to Friday. God bless. See you next video. Bye.